praise the Lord for another night to worship and praise the Lord and hear what the Lord says in his word. You know, we're going to, before I give the message, I'm going to, there's an old song that came to me as I was getting prepared to do the message here. It came to me, an old song when I was growing up, and I'm going to sing it, and you can sing along too, and and share any of these videos that I have teaching and preaching on. And this is, Great is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the ban banner, let the anthem rise. To Christ our King, great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He, great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He, great and mighty is the Lord our God, great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner, let the anthem rise, Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. He is great and mighty. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit. And whatever God has me to say. But it's good, good word tonight. The phrase He gave me to preach on is pure word. Have you ever heard that term, pure word? Probably not, because I don't remember ever hearing it too much. I know you've heard someone else say, you can count on me, or uh, my words are true, or, that, or, uh, or any other similar phrases like that, that, you, that I'll, I'll tell you the truth and things like that. But I'm going to be speaking about the pure word of God, the Bible. I'm going to be speaking about the Bible, and I'm just going to be able to highlight some things, but we're going to, hopefully you're going to get something from the Lord and receive. Man has tried to change it, tried to rewrite it, and even in, misinterpret it to fit their own desires. Many have said that the Bible is not rev relevant and true. Even my own daughter recently said that the Bible was not true and just another book. And it kind of shocked me because that's not like her. But I knew it was the spirits that she has to deal with some things. <clears throat> but this scripture says because there's so many people that alter and change things. This is what is important in the word. Several scriptures, both two times in Deuteronomy, one Deuteronomy 4, 2, and then 12, 3, both says in that ver verse, you should, not, you should not add to it or add to the word that I'm giving you or even take it away from it. And even Revelation says, if you take away any of the words of this prophecy, there in Revelations or anything, in this, a lot of the word, word of God is prophecy. That's why I put this one in here. Any, take away from any of these words and change it. Do what you, you don't want to listen to. God will take away his, your part from the tree of life. From that holy city. That's pretty harsh to think about. Man has tried to change God's word. Like I said. They have made different translations of the Bible even. Some com have completely changed. And altered scripture. Or even left out some important parts. Like NIV has left out some things about Christ. And his salvation. And, and receiving God. As your Savior and Lord. Repentance. And a lot of the other scriptures I knew growing up. Translations gave some 
misinterpretations of what the word says. Now they're trying to do an AI Bible. They've done a homosexual Bible. They've done all kinds of stuff to change the Bible. And, and it, many have twisted what God really is saying to their own benefit. <clears throat> many, I'm talking about the pure word of God. Because I was just saying that he, you cannot change it. You cannot take away from it. But many have changed it. Many have said it was no good. This word of God. Many have twisted it for their own benefits. Many churches have changed what the word says. To, for, and parts of it. And say it's not for, either not for us. Like many churches don't believe in the Holy Ghost and the speaking of tongues and the miracles and those signs, wonders, and miracles and even a lot of the prophecies. And many of them talk about that they don't believe in the Old Testament and the laws that is not for us. And now, and also the following away part of the church is changing things and taking away repentance and forgiveness and saying everyone's going to heaven, no need for it. God's grace, God's mercy, <laughs> or God's love. But you can't change it. You can't do things. He said you can't take away from the words and uh, of he got, Jesus said of these prophecies, of the things, of the what's going on, if you take away, you will not have part in heaven. But why change what is already pure, tried, and true, and powerful? Why change it if it's doing okay? If it's really doing something, if it's making a difference? God wrote the book, and do you think he likes it if you change what he wrote? And as a writer, I would I write things. I wouldn't like somebody to ch go in and take tear out par parts of my book. It actually changes the whole uh, theme of the book or the whole message of the book when you're taken out of the scripture, some parts of the scripture. You, ch you actually change what God is intention, what his meaning, who he is, what it's all about, and it makes it confusing. But his word still stands after thousands of years. God said he was the same yesterday, today, today and forever. So why won't his word stand forever Isaiah 40 verse 8 says the grass withers the flower fades but the word of our God stands forever stands forever the Bible is the only book that has sold more copies and lasted more over time than any other book in history And even Jesus said in a couple of places in the Gospels that heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will never pass away. I've heard many stories, and I can only give you a couple few of them here to, as an example of his word being strong and the Bible shining through in even disasters and surviving. If his word will last, through that, don't you think it'll last forever in our hearts, last and do a work in this world? There's a reason why it's still out there, even though it may have some misprintings in it. And I'm going to talk about one of them next Tuesday, but it's still the word of God. All right, here's a couple of stories. Years ago, I heard a story about a tornado that hit. And a family was safely made it through the tornado. And it was, of course, it always rains after tornado. And they survived it, but their home was destroyed. 
But as they were looking through and cleaning the plate, you know, picking and trying to find some some of the things out of the mess, there was a page from the book of Psalms. I don't remember anymore what chapter it was, but there was a page from the book of Psalms out of the Bible laying on the ground, but it was a Psalms that meant a much to that family. It was one of their favorite Psalms. So God was showing his faithfulness and showing his word to encourage. There was another family who had a house fire. And everything was destroyed, but all was all that was left was a Bible, and on the edges was singed and burnt, and maybe on the outside cover was a little burnt, but on the inside every word was exactly right. It was in place; nothing was harmed and intact. Everything was intact with that word of God. Then recently, just the other day, I saw a video of a woman giving a testimony how she ha she was in a car, her ca car broke down or something and it was on fire, completely destroyed the car. And she was, when it was safe to go to the car, she literally found her Bible, a little singeing on her, her on the edges, maybe a little bit from the smoke and and uh, fire, but it was completely looked like it was always has been, she said, laying in the car in the midst of a fire. God can go with you through that fire, through the disaster, through the situation. The word of God, which is the Bible, is powerful and real. Jesus said, Jesus said he was the word. And I, th I believe it's in John 14 says he, he is the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he was the word. He was with God at the beginning of creation. And the word he spoke. Let it be or peace even in the everything he said in his life and even at creation he spoke a word and it existed he even showed us how to speak use the word of god and said thus saith the word of god against satan and he spoke words like peace be still he spoke words be healed he, he was the word so he can speak what he wanted to hear do what it to come and then that word went forth and accomplished what he wanted it god wanted it to do many people in the bible spoke the word and they didn't have the bible as we know it they had the torah but they spoke the word that they did know. Even Jesus preached out of Isaiah and some of the other prophets. And many of the apostles in the New Testament did the very same thing. Preached the word of God. And spoke the word of God. And whatever they preached, it accomplished what was to be done. For what it was intended. This word goes forth to accomplish and doesn't just... It, it's not null and void. I think there's a scripture that says this new, it will not go forth null and void, but it will accomplish what it was intended to be, come forth. To show how powerful it is, too, in Hebrews 4, verse 12, and I'm going to read, I was going to uh, read it out of my regular Bible, but I'm going to read it out of the Amplified because it gave it such meaning for some of the terms that was used. <laughs> Hebrews 4 12 for the word of the word that God speaks see he's speaking when he, this word speaks is alive and full of power making it active operative 
energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And that's pretty sharp. Because I have, even my kitchen knives, even though they're dull, I still get my fingers cut. They're sharp enough. So a two-edged sword, I sure would cut myself. <laughs> two-edged sword is a blade that has, on both sides of the blade, is a sharp edge. It be penetrating to the dividing of the breath of life. Our soul and the immortal, our spirit man, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, the deepest part of who we are, exposing and shifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our hearts. They talk about, many times lately I've heard stories like uh, different ones, that, well, what was their intent? Nobody can know the tent, but the word of God and and uh, God can burrows into our uh, our hearts and knows exactly why we do things, why we do the word of God, why we do the things we do. I'm going to read that again. How powerful it is, Hebrews four twelve. For the word of God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing of the breath of life, our soul, and the immortal, our spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and shifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our hearts. That's how powerful this word of God is. I have personally through the years seen reading the word, especially when you need to hear a word, you need to hear something and you would, or to be encouraged to read something. And it's like, wow. And did something to your spirit. It makes changes in your life. It can make changes in in the way you do things. It can make changes in your thought life. And the way you think. And what you want to do. And also I've seen it when I've spoken it. Like here. In the word of God. And teaching it. And speaking the word of God. Because it is powerful. And goes forth to do some accomplished work. Because it's mighty and powerful. And it's real. And that's what I'm saying. It's real. And it really pierces the heart. It really does something in our spirit man. And even in our physical man. Because he, the hear, uh, when we hear the word, it builds our faith. When we see the word, we teach the word. and follow the word, we grow. All right, the scripture is also pure and many other things. I'm going to go through a few of those things. It's pure. When I say pure word, what does that really mean? That's the title of our message, pure word. First of all, what does the word pure mean? In the dictionary, it says the word pure means not mixed with or adulterated with any other substance or material. It is free of contamination. Doesn't that sound like the word of God? Why do you think, you know, they have on the Bible, uh, whole, Holy Bible, and many, this one don't specifically, but uh, on many Bibles, it'll say Holy Bible on the front. How pure and holy, because what is it? It is free from uh, from substances or materials that would violate it or contaminate it or change it. The Bible defines pure as a refined 
as being refined or tested. And I'm going to read you the one scripture that it has and a few that shows test, replaces it with testing or being, but the, it defines the word pure as refined and tested. Psalms 12, 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. Why do you think I said pure word? The words of the Lord are pure words. The silver tried in a furnace on the earth refined seven times. That's how pure it is. You know, with metals and uh, precious metals, golds and silvers, they'll put it in a fire and melt it and refine it and take out all the dross or the uh, slag and all the uh, dirts and whatever the, that causes it not to be pure. But he said it, it, the word is like doing that with the silver for seven times. And it said that also in Proverbs about the wisdom and the word being refined like silver. Refined many times. It has been tested many times. It's been tried many times. Psalms 1830, as for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried or pure. Tried and tested. He is a shield to all those who take refuge in it. David did many times. You can speak, go through some of the scriptures he has, how mighty and great he is, how his word worked for him, how he went to and looked unto Christ, God, how he, all these scriptures are good to encourage our hearts. It's tried. We can use it as a shield against the enemy. And we can take refuge in God and refuge in the word when we're sad and we're lonely or we have problems or we have situations we can get answers from the word of God. <clears throat> Another scripture says, 2 Samuel twenty two thirty one, As for God, his way is blameless or holy. The word of the Lord is tested, true, and pure. The word of the Lord is tested. It is, in other words, it's pure. It's holy. It's been tried and refined. He, it is a, there again, he, this repeats what uh, Psalms repeated this scripture. He, he is a shield to all those that take refuge in him. Other things that this word of God does for us is it is a light. This is one I've learned as a teenager, and our teen we were to memorize this in Psalms one nineteen one o five. the The word of God is a light, a lamp under my feet, and a light under my path. And then in Psalms nineteen talks about it. It, it enlightens our eyes. It opens our eyes and helps. Wow. How many times have you read something over and over and you looked at it? Wow. That, I don't remember seeing it. it. It opens your eyes of revelation and gives you what you need to see. It purifies. <clears throat> and Psalms 119.9 says, a young man will keep his way pure as long as he's following the word of God. As long as he's obeying the word of God and keeping the word. Also, David said in Psalms 119.11 that it's, it's written on his heart. In Deuteronomy said, said, God said it would be written, the laws and the Words would be written on their hearts. But David said this, that I, what I quote a lot, Thy word have I hidden 
that hidden in my heart or it's laid in my heart it's stored in my heart and put in my heart that i may not sin that'll keep me pure it'll keep me going it'll keep me from sinning it's trustworthy psalms 1 11, 7 says the works of his hands are true and justice and all his pers precepts all he's written is true and sure you can count on it you can count on it it will never go away what did i say it's forever you can count on it and stand upon it there was a uh oh, i can't remember her name uh but she was a singer and i i like i've kept had a couple of her songs that we used in church that she says she said when she was going through cancer and she was at four stage cancer and couldn't deal with no more. She was her husband found gave the story that he found her in the bathroom standing on her Bible, standing on the word, and she sang a song of when you can't ha hold on no more, when you can't do anything else but to stand on his word. And I've had to learn that and do that and practice that with my ministry too no matter what it looks like i'm going to still stand on his word he said this and i'm going to do it no matter what others and had tell me to give up or do this i'm going to still stand on because he said it and i'm going to believe it i i can trust it to to be true and holy he gave me scriptures to go by that i can stand on his words and know that they're true. Even one last night that the brother was quoting something and the Lord quickened my spirit about that uh, God would restore. See, he, he uh, restore seven times what the enemy has stolen. God had told my husband and I that many times through the years. We haven't gotten everything back, but that don't matter because they're standing on his word. He said it. It's in Jeremiah, I believe it was. Or no, Joel. Joel. It's a promise. Whatever promises he gives for your life, keep them and stand on them and stay strong in it. It is food. It's so good that it's food. Deuteronomy 8.3 says, I've tried and tested you and given you manna and you've gone without food and water and different things to show you something. He says, uh, Deuteronomy 8.3 it was, that you might understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by live by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what this word is. This is the word of God. This is God speaking to us. <clears throat> and then Peter, <clears throat> First Peter 2.2 2 says, It is pure milk of the word. Pure milk of the word. So we can grow in respect of salvation. That we can grow because just like a baby, we have to have the simple stuff first. And then the stronger stuff. It's inspired by God and his and goes has a purpose. Second Timothy three three sixteen says all scriptures inspired by God made profitable or has a purpose for teaching, for reproof, and for correction, for training in righteousness. Has a purpose. <coughs> also in John twenty th verse thirty one says the the word was written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. We, so you can believe and accept the abundant life that Christ died for us and gave us. It's a saving power. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to 
everyone who believes. If you believe and receive what it says, it'll do something. It'll bring, it'll cause, I'm, I've heard of stories of many people that didn't have nobody preaching and witnessing to them, but they were given a Bible and they read, and I've given Bibles for that purpose too, when it, to for them to read certain scriptures and when they did it changed their lives they ex believed and accept christ as their savior it's a saving power it's a weapon in ephesians six seventeen. it's the uh sword of the spirit which is the word of god that goes forth to cut goes forth to war against the enemy It blesses if you keep it. Joshua 1, 1, 8. This book is a law. Shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate it on a day and night. That means you're, if you meditate on it. You're going to actually apply it to your life. That you may be careful to do according to all that is written on it. So you apply it and do what it says. Then you will make your he will make your way prosperous he will bless you he will give you everything you need you have access and favor you will have favor because you're applying and using the word of god speaking it and working it and using it every day use it in your daily life apply the word to our lives not just for church, not just for study, not just for reading, for devotion or anything, but actually use it. Actually be part of this word. Walk in it. Use it. Apply it. There was one I found that <laughs> my husband, I was telling my husband in this last thing that it is, that I have anyway, that it is the word of God is mighty. How mighty is it? Jeremiah 23, 29. He says, Is not my word like fire? Fire to burn away. What is it? The scripture will do. It will burn away all the dross. That's like the silver refined. It will burn away all the bad stuff and leave the good. And keep all that's good. And it'll cause fire of the Holy Ghost. It'll well up in you and be worthy to praise the Lord at all times. It is like fire, declares the Lord. It's also like a hammer which shatters a rock. It is like a hammer. It actually does a work and accomplish and breaks the hard hearts. It breaks the the stubbornness in the, of the mind. It breaks the spiritual darknesses of hell off of people. It will do accomplish the work that it's meant to give. It is mighty. It will, it's powerful. It will go forth to accomplish what it was intended to do. What God intends for it. Because <clears throat> I've even read scriptures and it caught, just read the scripture, the devil will flee. He don't like to hear it. Because it's God saying, it's God speaking. And he don't want to be, have anything to do with it. He's guilty. <laughs> He's, so it shatters. It breaks the, the spiritual bondages of Satan and darkness. And I, we've also read, <clears throat> not here, but years ago, where, I was staying, living with my sister, and she lived where there was, her land was just, had a lot of gophers or groundhogs or something, and they couldn't mow it because it was so rough and uneven, and there was a, a horse next door that was so uneasy and very skittish, it was Arabian horse or some very skittish type horse, but anyway... It was very nervous and was always, always 
uh, nervous and couldn't be at peace at all. And they had a sump pump in the basement because of water problems in, in the drainage. So they that sump pump stopped working one time. And then I had a cat. I never forget. The... I, I'd say a good 50 to 75 feet. No, it wouldn't be that big. I'd say a good 15 to 20 feet. No, it wouldn't be even that big because <laughs> my room is... I'd say a good 10 to 12 feet, 10 feet at least, a vestibule or an entranceway to the home. And it was, of course, warm weather, and the screen door was on it, but the, do the storm door was shut open so it was to let the bre evening breeze in and it was at night and my cat I lived I wish I had a camera at the time but you know I you don't back then I we didn't have a lot of quick cameras equipment or phone, cell phones but that my cat literally was standing up on the screen and looking out and all of a sudden he started walking with his two front paws up in the air Almost, you know, how uh, cats will either hiss or act like something's wrong. Standing and walking backwards the whole distance of that entrance, little room. And right after that, I was feeling the spirit that there were some spiritual problems in that land. And in that area. And I, I recorded Psalms 91. I read I audibly read it with the authority of God and on a tape recorder. If you know what that is, it's <laughs> it's an old-fashioned way of recording things. But, and put it on a tape recorder and pushed and read it several times so it would replay and set it outside on the, on the property, outside where... Uh, and reading that scripture, just the scripture alone, nothing else. Reading that scripture, and after that was done, the next day, the land the land actually leveled out. The horse calmed down. The sump pump started working. The cat was not nervous anymore. And there was a spiritual difference in dark in the air. Reading the word makes a difference. And I've heard of stories of putting word scriptures up around the house and reading that word, audibly reading the word, and breaks the bonds of Satan. It breaks the situation in whatever situation you need. Praise the Lord. You're going to have to go back and catch the beginning. I'm just about done here. So the word, so it is mighty. It's like a hammer that shatters a rock. And Ezekiel 37 said it gives life. The word of God, uh, Ezekiel was told to speak and prophesy, which is talking the word of God. Prophesying is speaking God's words <coughs> to those bo dead bones. And they came back to life. Breath was put in, sinew and flesh was put upon the bones. And they came back to life. So the word literally gives life. So the word is tried and pure and true. It is powerful and able to do whatever God wants it and has for it purpose for it to do, go to do. Use it in your life and find how how it can change how you live. The pure word gives us everything we need to go to heaven. Because Jesus is the word. So there's no other way but through Jesus. And his word. And this chorus came to me before. I'm going to sing it again as I end this service. And if you would like to give your heart to Jesus or make changes and in the word. And if you'd like to. You can message me or contact me, but you can also, if you have a Bible, read it. Apply it. Use that powerful word. Use that powerful tool of God. And 
He is great and mighty. We can sing and praise to him. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Lift up the banner, let the anthem rise. To praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. I started that too high. <clears throat> Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Lift up the banner, let the anthem rise. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Because Jesus is the word. Great and mighty is that word of God. And powerful to do a work in our lives. Powerful to do whatever God wants it to do. And whatever we need, it is there. It is there. How we can eat. How we can have health. How we can do everything that we need. It's great and mighty. Because he is great and mighty. God bless you.